Sagi. This is your November 2022 love and general reading. This is for you if you're Sagittarius sun, moon, rising, or if you're cross-watching for a Sagittarius. It is a general reading, so it won't resonate with everybody, but it will resonate with quite a few of you. So just take what resonates. If it turns out it's really your story, there will be an extended reading and the link is below. It's the first link in the description box. Okay, Saji, I'm gonna pull, I have pulled a couple of cards for you just to see what you're coming into this month and what you're dealing with this month and the energies that are around you. And it's pretty darn nice, actually. Let's focus on those, if I can bring them in a bit. Okay, so big ticket card. We've got the Ten of Cups, Mars in Pisces, woohoo, the woohoo card. Okay, I mean, you can even see from this card that there's a woohoo going on. We've got a rainbow, we've got 10 cups. It's looking good in the neighborhood, isn't it? I mean, we've got this couple celebrating, the kids are running around. Fantastic. This is the energy of celebration. It could be a party, it could be a get together, it can be a, the kind of blossoming of a relationship. It's love, it's catching feels. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio energy. So some of you may be dealing with a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio or have some of that in your chart. Either way, you do not kick this card out of bed for eating crisps. There is no point. It's one of the nicest, happiest cards in the whole of the tarot. I know. So let's just, let's have a woohoo for Sagittarius. I like it. And then next to it, Major Arcana, we've got the Hermit. Virgo energy with the Hermit. Some of you may be dealing here with a Virgo. And we also have kind of this image that we always have of the Hermit, of the Fool having got to this point in the journey, which means this is you at this point in the journey, card number nine. So kind of, you know, a third of the way through almost. A little over that. My maths is not good. Don't make me do my maths face. This is somebody who has distanced themselves a bit from a situation, um, spent a bit of time on their own. They're looking into the lamp and they're gaining wisdom from that. Now, Sagittarius, of course, is a sign that's ruled by Jupiter, known for being sociable, being lucky, and you are, you're lucky, um, for being just good at mixing, good at parties, good at events, um, usually quite into travel, just, it's a fantastic sign to be, and I think you probably know that. But the thing that I think is not always mentioned about Sagittarians is that they also need um, some time alone. You need downtime, you need a project. So something that you can study time on your own, something that is just for you, often something esoteric, a bit magical, a bit, you know, a bit off road. Um, and also even, and I would say this is very important, personal freedom within romantic relationships is essential for Sagittarians. And I'm not telling you something you don't already know there because you are one, you know. So we have, you know, the lovely, gorgeous energy of the relationship here. And then we have the energy of you finding your own spot. This could be that you're starting to learn a new hobby, skill, subject. You find a class that is just yours. You find a tribe of people who understand you. This is very important this month. And it's a high stakes spiritual and astrological month this month. We've got, um, we're in eclipse season. We've got the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio on the 25th of October that's happened. We've got the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus coming up on the 8th of November. And this is all very significant. It's big, it's magical, it's moving things along. It's, it's what I call on my dailies, spiritual big jobs. Big stuff is happening, the players are moving, okay? So for some of you, I think there's a significant leap forward in the romantic department but also alongside this in your own life, there's a significant leap forward in the life department, in the spiritual beliefs. 
which is going to bleed over into what you do for a living, how you spend your time, that whole energy of your Sagittarian juju, okay? What makes you you and what makes you interested and want to get out of bed in the morning. And Sagittarians are never just defined by their relationship. There is an extra component to being a Sagittarius and please do, if you know what this is, leave it in the comments section. Tell me what it is to be a Sagittarius in an essence because I kind of know what it is from knowing Sagittarian friends and also I'm Pisces and we share the same planet of Jupiter but there's something, I don't know, I really like it. There's just something fun and ever moving about well, you are mutable about Sagittarians. And this is gonna come into its own for you. Within relationships, you're gonna find the freedom and the boundaries. So this could be a month where you talk about your expectations with your significant other about what you need, you know, how you need your time on your own, how you recharge your batteries, how you live your life, how your life is gonna be with that person. Um, and if you are dealing with a Virgo here, which we've got with the Hermit, of course, their definition is going to be quite different to yours. Or if you're dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, their definition is going to be different to yours. It doesn't mean you can't get along. It just means things are going to move to the point where it needs to be brought out into the open and talked about. But I like it. If you're single, you may meet somebody at a library event, an intellectual event, a research event, um, ancestry, anything to do with learning, going back to school, teaching, spiritual learning, anything like that, very, very good for you if you're single, okay? And also if you are single and looking to mingle, it's just what my, what the boys' friends say, um, it's a good time, get your disco pants on, don't get counted out. Okay, let's look further. So this is the energies that we're dealing with. What else do we need to know for Sagittarius for the month of November with the eclipse in there? We're in Scorpio season. Now I was gonna say, before I drew that card, I'm not sure, because Scorpio is the sign next to you and I'm not sure how well Scorpio energy sits with you, but having seen this card, maybe it's, you know, irrelevant because what do we get here? We get the six of wands. Winner, winner, chicken for dinner. Now, six of wands, let me just have a look. I think the six of wands, and I'm looking in what I call my smelly book, is a Sagittarius card. Mm -mm -mm. Six of Wands. I can never find the Wands in this one. Here we go. Nope, Jupiter in Leo. Oh, very nice. A major breakthrough. Some of you dealing with a Leo or someone who's on the Leo Virgo cusp. Um, a major breakthrough happens in creativity, insight or perception. Oh, yes. You can't go wrong with the Six of Wands. You can't go wrong with the Ten of Cups and you can't go wrong with the Six of Wands. These are both cards that invite celebration, change for the better. Um, I mean, the Six of Wands is literally the victory card. You know, you're off on your victory march, taking the laurel wreath of success with you, you know. For some of you, there may be an occasion like um, a party or of course, we're coming into your season after Scorpio. So your season, let me just think, is your season after Scorpio? Yeah, it is. It would be on the sort of late 21st of November or something like that. So this could be your birthday celebrations or get togethers surrounding that for some of you, for you early Sagis. Now, one card is a bit stuck. Why are you stuck? Oh, cripes. Saggy, I'm officially declaring this a Brucey bonus top banana reading. Look at that. Now you're going to go and get the Nine of Cups. So, do you remember we were talking about Pisces 
and we talked about Pisces and Sag sharing Jupiter. This card is Jupiter in Pisces. That was Mars in Pisces, which is the power of um, the war planet into pleasure. Okay, so a, dry, a pleasure driver. And if we're here with Jupiter in Pisces, Jupiter is always, as we say every month, the planet of expansion, which is why you have an expansive personality and outlook and need that freedom and lack of restriction. This is about finding your happiness, finding your dream. And the universe wants you to keep it very, very broad. For some of you, you're finding ultimate happiness in a relationship here. It's just lovely. It's the kind of reading that you really hope for. You know, it's dream weaver material. For others of you as well, this is about finding happiness in your life in general, finding something you love to do. Now, in this particular card, it's very often eating. <laughs> I know. It's often depicted um, as a feast. You know, someone's at a feast and they get the really good food and they're really, really happy and they... It's the all-you-can-eat buffet, you know? Not my thing, to be honest, but a lot of people like it. You've gone up, it's the all-you-can-eat buffet, no holds barred, no charge, bliss, okay? This is the emotional all-you-can-eat buffet of life, and the universe is saying to you, it's a free-for-all, Saji. It's a free-for-all for you. Now, you have endured, I think, from the readings I've been doing for you, quite a lot of kind of restriction and a little bit of hold back and a little bit of, um, I don't know, bother, I would say. We had the King of Swords popping up all the time, being a bit of a dry stick. And it feels like you're finding an expansion. You're finding, you're finding your mojo and it's massive, massive mojo. Get on. Okay, what else do we need to know, please, as we're expanding? Also, expand your knowledge, expand your horizons. That is big for you. Whether you're looking to meet someone, whether you're looking to change direction in your career, which some of you probably, I mean, with Sagittarians, what you tend to find is they don't look for a direction to change their career. They just bump into somebody at some event or traveling or whatever it is. And next thing you know, they're doing something different. Sorry, give me a really itchy nose this reading. It's doing, they're doing something different and that's it. You know, it's a bit like Pisces. You don't particularly, I mean, sometimes you do, but not often plan things per se. Let me just try and, I'm just trying to up these so I can put some more underneath. And then look, here's your Scorpio card. We get the death card. We're coming, we're in Scorpio season and the universe, in your case, very much for the better, is at the station where it says all change. Everything must change and nothing remains the same and we're going to drive this force forward and we're not going to look back. If any of you are in difficult relationships, intractable stuck situations, they will not survive this you would not want them to. You do not want some whatever it is bore to stand in the way of this energy for you, okay? You just don't want that. It has the energy of transformation, okay? That's what Scorpio energy does. And I feel like you've earned this over the past few weeks and months. You've had some difficulties, you've been held back, You've had a few people raining on your parade or trying to, and now we're in the energy of the woohoo, of the pushing it forward, of the big fat yes, I mean, do it. Okay, what else do we need to know about this situation? Any cautions? Anything that's behind the scenes? Aha, okay, here we go. I knew there was something. Very important card, we've got the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups has somebody mourning three cups that are spilled and not yet ready to turn around and notice two cups that are behind them, okay? This is a card that tells you, however good this is, there is something 
you've had to cut ties with or leave behind or admit is over or just the direction you were going in that the universe sees you kissing goodbye to as you double up the five and get up to the ten, okay? This kind of rainbows and unicorns and all that doesn't come from nowhere. I think this five of cups you have been doing for the past five months. Those of you that have been involved with water signs are particularly resonant with this. Poof. Now we've got the Hierophant underneath the Hermit and both of these cards are quite kind of, I would say sensible cards. You know, taking time for yourself and falling in with convention in some way. Now the Hierophant means a few things. It's the High Priest. It can be conventions, schools, universities, and I'm definitely getting especially for those of you in the romance stakes, but also in your, I think they're combined, in your life and interests and romantic life, that institutions like historical institutions, I've had this for you for ages, churches, universities, um, historical buildings, anything to do with this is huge for you, okay? Events, you know where you have those kind of events where you, I don't know, there's a talk on some statue or some book or something like that. Um, you know, it's probably a lot more interesting than that, but that will be very lucky for you. You could meet someone at this. The Hermit and the Hierophant are connected here. So you may be involved with somebody who works in an old building or you, God, I don't know what's doing to my nose, excuse me, or you work in an old building or there's just a real interest in your a real interest in your ancestry in your history i don't know it's a really weird thing it came up for you a few months ago to do with virgo and it's coming up for you again okay which we like this is fantastic we love it in fact so i feel like with the hierophant you need to maybe find a form for your knowledge so with the Hierophant, it would be like joining um, a spiritual group or some kind of history society or an astrological group or whatever the group is. It's a body of people that follow a way of knowledge, not in a kind of intense, you know, this is the book of the law and you must learn it, but more in a fellowship. We are together in this thinking and this is your tribe. It could even be um, political, just switching on my heated boot, it could even be political, um, analytical, religious, I don't know, but it's there for you. For others of you as well, I can't ignore this, and this is on the cards for some of you, possible like moving in with someone, uh, getting married, proposals, because the Hierophant represents the institution of marriage, becoming exclusive whatever that means to you, okay? And it goes together with the Ten of Cups and the Six of Wands, forming this, quite honestly, triangle of glee and happiness. That's pretty damn good, isn't it? I'm loving this reading for you, honestly. Okay, what do we need to know? Advice, please. Anything else that we haven't thought of that we need to know about? For Sagittarius. Wowzers. So we get the Magician, which is gorgeous as well. You're getting quite powerful archetypes here with the Hermit, with the Hierophant, with the Magician. They're all masculine energy for me, um, but they're gentle masculine energy and they are the energy of your own agency. So if you think of the magician, the magician can make things happen in front of them. They can, it's an alchemy thing, it's alchemist. So you have the four tools of the tarot in front of you as the magician, as above, so below. And you know how to stir, mix, manipulate, whatever you want to call it, these things in order to make something happen. Some of you are directly manifesting the Ten of Cups. And you've done that through your own esoteric knowledge and the way that Sagittarians do. It's so random, 
that I can't quantify it. It's not my place to quantify it. Um, but as a Pisces, I can tell you I understand it because we move in the same seemingly haphazard, but not really haphazard, random kind of a juju way as Sagittarians do. Let's just say it's working for you. This is not a time necessarily to play by the rules. You never have, you've been bogged down by that for too long and this is now the time of reward and release, okay? And you have earned it by being the magician. God, I love this reading. If it's making my nose itch as well, we're on to something. A bit unfortunate for my nose, but you know, all the same. Nice. Underneath the Nine of Cups, we've got the Page of Swords. Um, always represents for me, it's like minor news of the Page of Swords. It can also be social media. So for some of you, and this has come up for you in the last few months, um, expanding your social media presence in your business, in your life. Um, many Sagittarians have vlogs, blogs, YouTube channels, Instagram pages, internet businesses. Um, it suits you very much. So anything to do with that is very, very good, especially coming under the Nine of Cups, expanding internationally, expanding into different media, different social um, media type things. You know what I'm saying. Things like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of that stuff, just finding maybe a different way of expressing yourself. And also for those of you looking to make connection, whether it's romantic or career, Again, with the Page of Swords, you can make that connection through reaching out or being reached out to on different media or expanding the media that you've already got, okay? There's an exchange of news and information here and you wanna be and you can be in on it. You've got plenty to teach other people about happiness from this reading and how you got there. This is about your story, Sagittarius, and people want to hear it. And then under the death card, we've got the two of, two of swords. We've got new moon energy here. So what you're gonna have with the death card is a big change experience, okay? But it's not all happening at once. So if we look when the next new moon is after we had the eclipse on the 25th, it's gonna be significant for you. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> I love this. I love it because I'm not an astrologer, but I've got, and I'm going to blow my own trumpet here, and I don't do that very often. I've got some really good astrological intuition. So guess what the next new moon is? No wonder it's so significant for you and so freaking peachy. So Wednesday the 23rd, date for your diary of November, the peachiest of peach. The 22nd, sun enters Sagittarius. The 23rd, there's a new moon in Sagittarius. Get you. Everyone wants to be seated next to you at the dinner table in the Nine of Cups. And your ruler, Jupiter, goes direct. Expect double helpings of luck. Oh my God. Thank you. I mean, this is the nicest reading I've done for anyone in a really long time. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at some of this juicy loveliness. I'm going to look at the Ten of Cups, going to look at the Nine of Cups. I'm going to look at if you're single, where you can meet someone, if you're coupled, how it moves to the next level. I'll also have a look at how they feel, what's going on with your person, and if there's anything we need to be aware of. I'm very excited for you, Saji. I'm going to, I'm just like Paul Hollywood, I'm doing a handshake. Doing a handshake. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.